everybody, it's David from Retrium. How's it going, my friends? Today I'm going to talk to you about something that is near and dear to my heart and also is a big pain point for so many teams that I talk to on a regular basis. And that is, if you are a distributed team, how do you run effective retrospectives? So the problem to me, the main problem with distributed retrospectives is that most of the advice that you see online from literature and also even from people that you talk to about how to run good retrospectives assumes co-location. It assumes that you're all physically in the same spot. But for most of us, that's not the case. We live in a distributed world and the advice that people give you should take that into account. We as distributed workers don't sometimes have access to sticky notes and flip charts and markers. These are things that co-located teams can take advantage of. If you're distributed, it's much harder to use them effectively. So I'm here to talk to you about how can you run effective distributed retrospectives. But before we jump too deep into the answers, what I wanted to first touch upon is an answer to a more fundamental question, which is what is a distributed team anyway? And if I had to guess, I'd say that most of you are running distributed teams without even realizing it. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that in my mind, if you have just one person who is working remotely for the day, you need to operate your team as if it's a distributed team. In other words, if you have a distributed team, if you just have one person who is working from home, if you have someone who's out sick for the day and is just calling in, you're a distributed team. It's not just teams that are outsourcing. It's not just teams that have three, four, five office locations. Many of us are distributed without even realizing it. With that in mind, the question is, what can you do to make your distributed team, even if it's just distributed for the day, what can you do to make them run more effective retrospectives? So tip number one, and this is fundamentally important, not just for retros, but beyond that for agile in general and for meetings in general. If you have a distributed team, guess what? You probably are treating the people who are calling into your meetings as second class citizens without even realizing it. How is that possible? Think about it. If you have, let's say, eight to 10 people around a table in a conference room all talking to each other, and then you have one or two people calling in the, through the conference line, if you've been in the situation where you've been the person calling in, how easy is it to participate in that meeting? I've never been able to call into a conference call where the people on the other end of the conference call are face-to-face, -face, they're in person. I've never been able to make that work for me. I can't understand what they're talking about. I'm losing out on the nonverbal communication. And this is true even if you're using video chat. So one thing that I tell teams that I've talked to, and there's a lot of pushback usually on this at first, but then when they try it, they realize, huh, not a bad idea. If you are a distributed team, you just have that one person or more who's calling in, guess what? You should be operating as a fully distributed team. That means don't congregate face-to-face. -face. Have all of those people call in to the conference call. Schedule a video chat and have everybody join via the video chat so that you're all on equal playing field because you don't want second-class citizens on your team. If you were all in person, you would never tell one person on your team to go sit in the corner and turn around and only use your ears to participate and understand what's going on. You would never say that. You'd, of course, invite everybody to the conference table so that everyone would be on level playing field around participation and communication. So why is it somehow okay if you have a distributed team to tell the people who are calling in, guess what? For us, we can visually communicate with nonverbal communication techniques. But you, mm, you're not welcome. You have to just use your voice. You have to just use your ears. That's not okay. Don't have second class citizens if you have a distributed meeting. Instead, level the playing field and have everybody call into that meeting so that you're all on the same page in terms of what communication techniques work for everybody, not just some of you. So that's a general tip about distributed teams. And if you're running a retrospective and you have a distributed team, that's step one. Make sure everybody's remote. You don't want that unequal playing field. But beyond that, what else can you do? Because I started out this by saying that you don't have access to sticky notes if you're distributed. You don't have access to markers. You don't have access to flip charts. But we all know that effective retrospectives can only happen through facilitation techniques. And most facilitation techniques rely on those physical items that I just mentioned. So what are you supposed to do? That's where tools come in. Now, I'll be the first person to tell you that tools will never make a good team great. It will never make a bad team good. Tools are just there to help. Your team has to make effective use of the tools for them to be useful in the first place. But it's also the case that tools are necessary for your team to be effective at retrospecting. They're not sufficient, but they're necessary. Here's why. A good retrospective tool will help to replicate 
the sticky note flip chart and marker environment and the facilitated environment that you can have for your co-located team, they can help replicate that for your distributed teams. So for example, at Retrium, what we do is we have different stages to a retrospective. They start with brainstorming where people privately write down on our software what it is they want to start, stop, and continue working on, for example. Those things that they're brainstorming are put into the system privately. I can't see what you're typing, you can't see what I'm typing, it gives us a chance to avoid groupthink. But it also keeps us engaged because we're all responsible for participating in the meeting at once. Once brainstorming is over, Retrium will move you along to what's called the grouping or affinity theming phase, where you're trying to find like items, things that seem like they belong together on the board. Then we move on to dot voting, where everyone in the software can click on which topics resonate the most with them. And we use all that information to enter the final phase of a retrospective, which is discussion. How do you prioritize your discussion effectively? You want to make it from the bottom up. You want to have the topics that resonate with the most people on your team. You want those topics to be talked about first. Retrium does all of that automatically for you. It keeps you all engaged with the retrospective process so that it's not just a conference call. You have software that's helping you facilitate effectively. Retrium is not the only tool. Of course, you can use free ones like Trello or Google Docs that are general purpose tools that you can, in quotes, hack together to make work for retrospectives. But you really should consider a dedicated tool to make your life easier if you're a distributed team. And I'll end with what I said at the beginning, which is don't think if you have one person who is remote that you can get away with sticky notes and flip charts. That person is not going to be able to contribute to the retrospective to the level that they should be able to contribute at. You don't want second class citizens and you need a tool. Those are the two things that I'd say if you're distributed, you need to check out. Again, I'm David at Retrium. Feel free to ping me if you have any questions about retrospectives more broadly. It doesn't have to have anything to do with my tool at all. Uh, it's David at Retrium.com. I'm more than happy to chat with any of you and all of you. All right, have a great day, everybody. See ya.